Hello everyone, Steve Goodwin here with my anchor test video number 144. Today we will look at the 20 pound range anchors down in the soft mud at Scow Bay. This will be a 180 degree reset test. I'll be using a two knot boat speed as I pass over the anchors and I'll be giving them five resets each. This compares with my previous sandy mud seabed testing where the boat speed was held at 3.5 knots and a total of 10 resets each. So today's test will be a little less thorough, but perhaps a little more realistic at the more gentle two knot passover. Now you may recall from that sandy mud testing that most of the anchors could cope with the test quite well and could reset whether they disengage or just rotate the seabed. It was only a handful of anchors that had real trouble. It's completely different here with this soft mud test. Uh, most of the anchors you'll see are going to have real trouble with this particular test and it's only a small handful that do real well. All right, let's just get right to it and we'll see how these anchors stack up. First up is the 17 pound Mantis M2. Its initial set is perfect. It's upright and it varies out of sight. Here's the first reset. The anchor rotated. It did not release from the seabed during the rotation. But when I just applied a small amount of thrust, the anchor just rolls right out. And it did not reset. Uh, toward the end of the drag, we see the ear of the anchor shown just a little bit there at the top. So the anchor was on its side. Here's another reset attempt, more dragging. In fact, that was it. There was nothing else this anchor could do. We see it up on its side and mostly out of the substrate. Guess this mud fouled. This is a 24 pound delta anchor landed on its side but the act of setting it kind of rolled it upright and it just dove straight in perfectly. This first reset looks like a perfect backflip uh, but that's it. The anchor did not reset after a very long drag. Here's another reset attempt much more slowly and gentle. No reset, long drag. Now this third reset, we can see the anchor was basically upside down. You can go back and rewind that, and it was mostly upside down. But the act of the reset tended to roll it upright, and lo and behold, it sets, but not a lot of holding power. It was, for some reason, maybe fouled and just pulled right out. So there were no other resets, and at the bottom of the screen here, we see the anchor is upside down. That is the underside of the anchor. That's the tail end of the last attempt. Next is this 32-pound U.S. Navy anchor from 1945. Now, this anchor does not have mud palms like the later Danforth anchors do. And as we can see, the crown and the stock of the anchor have embedded into the seabed with the fluke tips pointing skyward. And that's how it remains. This anchor failed to set. This is, ex this is all we got. I slowed down, stopped, pulled it fast. Nothing, just no initial set whatsoever. I went ahead and conducted five reset attempts, and out two out of the five actually did set. And here's uh, the first one. The anchor did a, kind of a partial backflip. We see a stock on the right side that has uh, emerged up out of the seabed, but nope, the anchor does hook in and works fine. Uh, the third, four, the second, third, and fourth was no holding, and the fifth was another solid reset. So two out of five. However, we can't really rate this particularly well if the thing can't set initially to begin with. Next is this 17 pound Excel number one. Now in my previous straight line holding checks for this anchor in this seabed, it was uh, very difficult. It really never initially set properly, but as we saw the anchor landed upright, maybe that was a factor, but that initial set was quite firm. Uh, however, the resets were not as good. Um, three or perhaps four of the five attempts, the anchor did partially re-engage, but never could hold the targeted 2000 RPM or about 285 pound bursts of power that I'm giving all these anchors. So really failed to re-engage re out of any of the five, five attempts.
Next is the slightly larger 21 pound Excel number two. The initial set was very good, and the first reset was also quite acceptable. There was a slight bit of motion here with the target 285 pounds of thrust, but I'm going to call that a success. Couldn't tell if it was a rotation or a backflip, but either way, first reset was just fine. But that was it. The other four resets uh, were complete releases and almost no resistance whatsoever. Here we get a rare glimpse of the anchor just as it's slowing down from one of these reset attempts, and yes, it's completely and perfectly inverted. Next is the 22-pound quick set. It did land almost upright, and the toe did engage, but as soon as I pulled a little harder, the anchor rolls out, big blob of seabed there, and it keeps on rolling. Eventually, it ends up in a perfectly inverted attitude. That was real common for this anchor. So no initial setting whatsoever. The first reset was pretty solid. It didn't get any footage of it, but all the rest of the reset attempts resulted in this condition. The anchor just perfectly stable in the inverted position. Next is the 23-pound Lumar Claw. This is an anchor that's pretty poor overall in my testing, but in this seabed, straight line is not bad. We saw that initial set was quite good, and then the first reset was good as well. It uh, dug down nice and deep and buried the camera. But after that, there was nothing. I didn't get much footage of the actual resets, but here's some aftermath, a big ball of seabed. I don't even know where the anchor is. Here's another attempt. Uh, again, lots of dragging, big ball, and no real image. Can't tell you if it's upside down or right side up. We do see a big ball of mud there on the retrieval, and it did fall away just as it came to the surface. Next anchor is the 26-pound CQR, and on the initial set, it was just brilliant. We see the anchor completely out of sight. It's digging down in and stops the boat. And this anchor is actually the first anchor that I can genuinely say did a little better than that first group of anchors. Uh, the first and second resets weren't very good. We see here the anchor's just dragging along. In the lower left a bit there, there's a lump. That's the toe of the anchor that must be just under the surface and happily on its side. Uh, the third reset was good and solid. There was a bit of a drag, and then it eventually just settles right in and no no motion at all. So that's good. The anchor, the anchor is capable of fully re repeating its initial setting performance. Fourth reset wasn't any good, but the fifth set showed promise as well. So again, it's the fifth time. It's had plenty of opportunity to become fouled. We saw it was dragging on its side with that lump, but nope, it rolled a vertical, buried, stopped the boat, just great. Unfortunately, it could only do that great reset two out of the five times, so still lots of room for improvement. Okay, next we have the 15-pound Fortress FX23. The anchor has landed flat horizontal there on the seabed, and it's just skimming along, not real fast, just sort of inching it along. Eventually, the uh, articulating flukes pivot downward, dives into the seabed, and makes lots of holding power. Now, the first reset was successful. I think there may have been a rotation, so I might not have nailed the reset course. Um, the anchor did come uh, come out a bit. We saw it just briefly listing, and then it resets, dives back in, no problem. Now the second reset was a big problem. It uh, must have been a backflip. The anchor emerges. It was flying along there, but even going real slow here, there's a lump of seabed wedged into the flukes that's preventing the anchor from pivoting, so that was a bust. Now on the third reset, that was another backflip, but this flipped it back over such that the flukes were pointing downward in that sort of stuck position, and that was successful. And the fourth and fifth resets produced no resistance. So that, that took a little bit of force to get that fluke to, to move past that mud. I didn't see a shell or a stick, so not sure. 
I'm not sure why it wasn't resetting. Maybe the footage will show that it was upside down and not able to articulate. It, it certainly was enough mud and resistance to keep the flukes from just articulating under their own weight. Okay, next anchor is the 21 pound Vulcan. The initial set is textbook. The anchor landed upright, did tip over onto its side a little bit on the first uh, movement, but just buries uh, right in there and stopped the boat nicely. Did get a captured tath camera tether, so we didn't get to see the first rotation, but this is the aftermath, the anchor dragging on its side. Here's the second uh, aftermath of the second reset attempt. Same thing on its side, no reset. Here's the third try. This had much better results. Bit of dragging here at first, but then the anchor rolls upright and just digs right down and does perfectly. Fourth reset was a disaster. We see the anchor completely upside down. That is the bottom of the fluke. And as I slowed down, the anchor started to tip. Thought it might roll completely, but nope. It ended up being on its side and the toe nowhere near the seabed. But the last uh, and the fifth, fifth and final reset attempt uh, was perfect. It uh, jerked the anchor around and rolled it uh, upright, and down it went. So if the anchor can attain a, a an upright attitude, it will rebury. But when it's on its side or upside down, it's almost hopeless in this seabed. Okay, this next anchor is a bit of a leap in performance over the previous anchors that we have seen here today. This is a 21-pound roll bar Rockna anchor. We saw the initial set there was immediate and perfect. This first reset attempt was a, a complete backflip. We see the anchor is inverted and very stable. In fact, on this reset, that was it. No, no rolling into the upright position and no reset. So that's a bitter failure. However, the other four tries were excellent. I can't really explain why this one failed to rotate into that position. Uh, maybe it's a matter of uh, different amounts of mud being collected on the, on the top side, or in this case, the underneath side of the anchor. We can't see that. But in any event, that was the deal. Uh, one, one out of five was no good, and the others were great. Here's the second reset, and I believe it's another backflip, but since it was already upside down, the anchor has flipped upright. And now that the anchor is recontacting the seabed, it just plunges right into it and out of sight. So that's just great. Here's the third reset. You can see that I nailed the course. The chain actually bumped the camera a little bit as it went by. So yet another backflip. And yep, the anchor is upside down here when it emerges from the seabed. But this time it successfully rolls upright just there. We just had a glimpse of it. It rolled upright, stopped the boat. Everything was great. After that, though, I had no more images. Here on retrieval, we do see some mud adhering to the fluke. But uh, that was overall quite good. Four successful resets out of five. Next, we have the 21-pound Spade S60. This is an anchor that does not make tremendous holding power in this soft mud. And indeed, it just barely holds the target 285-pound thrust on the initial set. Here's the first reset. It is a backflip, and the rotation or the backflip occurred while the anchor was still underneath the seafloor. Here it's now emerging upside down, and it, right away, though, it rolls into the vertical position and resets, and it repeats that initial 285-pound that initial pull, but still just moving slightly. I'll call that a success. Now, right away here, the camera does plunge into the seabed, and that's the last of our images. The anchor was good. Good solid resets for four out of the five attempts. It was the number third try that did not uh, reset. So there again, four out of five good resets for the Spade S60. Next, we have the 21-pound Genuine Bruce. We didn't have images of the initial set, but it was uh, right, right away sitting nicely. Here's the first reset, and the boat's already pulling on it, but the I think the nylon acts like a rubber band, and at first it really wasn't moving. Then eventually the anchor becomes dislodged. looked like it was in a big ball. Don't, couldn't tell if it was upside down or not, but it eventually uh, finds its way back into the seabed. 
And here I'm just keep pulling and pulling and pulling, and finally the anchor stops. Must be very, very well buried under there. Here's the second reset. Not going to get any more images. We get the plunged camera, but I'll just say that the anchor was good for four out of five. Uh, the, 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 the third one was the problem, and it actually did an initial reset but it was only partially engaged. The anchor, the boat was still moving ahead at a knot or so uh, with that target thrust. So I'm going to go ahead and rate it four out of five resets for the 21 pound Bruce. Okay, now we are on to the 17 pound Mantis M1. This is the 14th anchor we've looked at so far in this video, and it is the first that is able to reset reliably each and every time. Here's the initial set, giving it a good burst of power, and look how the anchor just isn't moving as much as some of those previous anchors. So the, we know the holding power straight line is much, much better for this anchor. Here's the first reset. It did have a backflip. The anchor does emerge from the seabed upside down, but the anchor does rotate into the correct position, digs right in, and stops the boat. The camera did plunge out of sight, so no more images. I will say that the anchor had one of the resets that took a little bit longer than the others. But again, 5 out of 5, Mantis M1. Next we have the 21 pound Viking. And this is the first anchor that we've seen today that is flawless in its performance. Saw that initial set was immediate and holds solid. Here is the first reset. It comes out of the seafloor with a massive amount of seabed attached to it, so we never get a glimpse of the anchor. We don't know if that was a, an inverted sort of a rollover or, or perhaps a rotation, but in any event, it works perfectly. Very, very quickly, the, anchor, the boat was brought to a halt. Here's the second reset. This time, we get a clear view that it was a backflip. The anchor emerges inverted and immediately rolls right into the upright position. Okay, that was five out of five. It really doesn't get any better. That was uh, very, very uh, immediate and uh, very solid, 2,000 berths, no forward boat motion. Perfect. Okay, the last anchor we will view is the 20-pound Danforth 18H. That initial set was fast and perfect. Here's the first reset. Just happened as f so fast you could hardly even see it going on. It was by far the fastest and most solid reset of any anchor I tested. Here's the second reset. Maybe a backflip there, and the anchor moved in total maybe about one anchor length. Again, extremely impressive. It's really unexpected for this to be so well. Uh, each and every attempt was perfect. Uh, we don't get any more vi vision at this point, but it was 7 out of 7. And toward the end, I was giving the anchor even greater pulls. Uh, did a couple at 600 pounds of thrust, and then the last couple resets, I gave it the full boat thrust. So over 1,300 pounds, and it was just solid as a rock each and every time. Again, a bit of a surprise. These pivoting fluke anchors are known to have some unreliability at resetting due to the possibility of the pivoting action being defeated by sticks, shells, or mud. But it wasn't the case today. Here's a look at the latest 20-pound range anchor ranking chart. And if you look toward the middle of these columns, you'll find a 180-degree soft mud reset 5-to-1 scope 12-foot chain column. That does correspond to the test that we just saw. Now, there's so many columns and so many different seabeds and categories that even if an anchor knocks it out of the park or falls on its face, it doesn't change the overall ranking much. However, there have been some anchors that have been slowly climbing or descending on this chart as I have expanded my testing into new and different seabeds. In particular, the 22-pound Rockna Roll Bar Anchor has been slowly and steadily climbing this chart. Those that are familiar with my earlier work know that when I first started testing Rockna anchors in the sandy mud seabeds, 
the anchor was very, very poor and often was right down near the bottom of my charts. But the big story when looking at this chart is the clear dominance of the Viking anchor. Note that it does not have any number ones or number twos in any column. Uh, It's well populated with fives and fours. There's a few threes and a 2.5 there in the cobble sand. But no, it's just absolutely a dominant performing anchor. I have not tested in all seabeds yet. And there's a few anchor designs that I have not tested. But it is looking likely that the Viking is the finest all-around performing anchor available. Okay, as with all my shootout tests, at the end of the video, I like to arrange the anchors on the bench in the order of their performance. So down here at the left, we have the group of anchors that could either set just once, or maybe not at all, or maybe even not set initially at all. And I don't have these in any particular order. They're all just really, really poor at this test. Note that there are no roll bar anchors in this group. In the middle, we have the anchors that could reset twice out of five. There's three of them. That was a CQR, the Fortress, and the Vulcan. And then here, the last group of six anchors. These are the ones that really, the only ones that could really perform reliably. Uh, The Rockna and the Spade both reset four times out of five, and then the others were five out of five. I think the Bruce had a little trouble with one of it, but nope, that's all real good. Um, I wanted to mention the Fortress. We saw it had trouble pivoting. There was a little bit of mud stuck in between the two flue caps, and that was preventing the shank from moving. The Danforth did not seem to have that problem, and I want to point out why I think that is. There's just a lot of space between the two flukes and the shank, and there's just there that particular mud just wasn't strong enough to prevent that shank from passing through there. And again, this anchor was, uh, I believe, it was seven passovers, lots and lots of thrust, just just perfect performance. Okay, that's it for this 180 degree reset test. I can think of a future test that might be a good complement. That might be a 90 degree slack line test. And that would be where I'd set the anchor in one direction and then while not moving or not pulling on the road, reposition the boat off to the side and then commence pulling 90 degrees. There wouldn't be any backflips going on, but we'd probably get a good idea if these anchors could cope with that pivot. All right, that's it for now. Big thanks to everyone who is watching and especially donating to these efforts of mine. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. And as always, anchor safely.